In this video, we're going to work through the first eight measures of Bach's Gavotte from French Suite No. 5. It begins in one key and ends in another key, and it's a great demonstration of uh, simple modulation using a pivot chord. Um, we're going to listen to it first, at least the first eight measures, and then we'll go ahead and analyze it. Here it is. Then it repeats. Okay. So, in this example, there's one sharp, uh, it starts in the key of G, and there's even a harmonic rhythm. These octave jumps every two beats tell us the chords are changing once every two beats. Uh, by and large, Actually, this whole last measure is an arpeggiated chord, we'll see. Uh, so without too much um, investigation, we can find out this is the key of G, G major. We've got a tonic chord here for two beats, then a dominant six, with the F sharp there in the bass, submediant, that's a E minor harmony. Uh, this looks like um, D in the bass, but yet with that B half note up in the soprano, um, it's really a B, D, F sharp chord, which is the mediant. We're kind of going around the circle of fifths here. And then this C harmony is the subdominant. Well, we have an A actually here, so we might actually call that um, A supertonic. But you could call this first chord subdominant, and then this the supertonic uh, six. Okay, so that's a first inversion because C is in the bass. Now, this entire next measure in the key of G, we have D. F sharp and A. Really, it's it's an arpeggiated uh, dominant chord the whole measure. So we're going to just say dominant. Um, because there's a couple C's, uh, I think we'll call it a dominant 7. All right. And it goes where we expect it into the next line, to tonic. Um, and again, for two beats, um, you could call this a tonic 6-4, but I, I really think that's um, over-analyzing it. It's basically an arpeggiated do. So, so up till now, no, no, no problems. In fact, I think the G harmony really goes um, for three beats. Then we do find uh, by the fourth beat uh, very clearly an E minor sonority, and um, that E minor sonority in the key of G is the submedian again. All right, the next four measures, or at least these three measures, have several C sharps. C sharp is a pointer, and it points to D. It's the leading tone of D, and by adding that, to the key signature, the one sharp you already have, we've got a key signature of two sharps. So it's really clear that we're modulating to either D or B minor. And if you look at the end, the uh, the A here and the D, we're going to D. And that's what's so neat about uh, analysis with modulation. You really have to look forward and then work backward. And that kind of recursive nature is, uh, I think, what's so neat about this. But it's also an acquired skill. And the more you do, the better you get at it. One strategy is to start um, near the end and work backwards until you get to that point where you know something has happened, where the C-sharp has come in. And I think I'm going to try that uh, with this example. So let's go ahead and, knowing that we're going to D, let's go ahead and just call this last octave D here. Let's just call it a tonic. And then for the previous two beats, we've got A, C, sharp, E, G. That's going to be our dominant 7. And then for the previous two beats, We've got D, F sharp, A. I mean, it could be an inversion, or it could be root position, but let's, again, not get too overly concerned about that. and Just call it a tonic, but you could call it a tonic 6 if you like. And then uh, the beat before that, now notice there's an A here that in the alto-ish area that's sounding during the whole measure, but uh, I'm going to just go with this last beat where we have C sharp. C sharp is still sounding. It's... Uh, accidental chiris through the measure. So C sharp and A and uh, E and G, really, right here we've got a dominant uh, 7 chord, but in first inversion. So we're going to call that dominant 6-5. And then here, tonic, right, D, F sharp, A. The previous two beats, really, if you take the notes and add them up, everything except for um, a couple, you know, passing tones, if you take those out, 
it's really a dominant chord. Maybe this is a passing tone too. It's really a dominant chord, and I think that's what we're going to call it. So uh, let me clean that up a little bit and just label it these two beats. Just label it dominant. Okay. Uh, for the previous two beats, we've got an E minor sonority. We've seen that a couple times in this example. So E minor in the key of D, right? The key that we're headed to is the, the key of D. That's our destination. So E minor would be the supertonic. And then the two previous beats before that, um, there is no A, but we do have a C sharp, and we have an E, and we have a G. So really, those notes um, spell a leading tone, which is a diminished triad. But because G is our lowest note, we're going to call it a leading tone 6-4. Okay, now the, the question is, in the beat before the accidental happens, could we have a pivot? In other words, is this E minor sonority that we're calling a sub-mediant in the key of G. Could it also be a, a traditional or conventional chord in the key of D? And the answer is clearly yes. The E minor chord, which we've actually seen here, is the uh, supertonic. And so that's where we're going to put our L bracket. That's where we're going to say, hey, we're moving to D major. And now everything that follows is really very, very conventional uh, D major harmony. One last thing I want to point out is there's a repeat sign at the end of this section. And so when we repeat back to the tonic, to the G, it'll kind of make us think of this, redefine this, uh, or reconceptualize this tonic chord as really a dominant. You know, the D is really a dominant of G. So it really works well with this repeat of this section.